Hello friends, welcome to the Edupedia Word. This video is in continuation with the previous tutorial video. So let's begin. In our previous tutorial video, from the topic variable data types and constants, we have covered two above topics mentioned in green. So we have covered variables, data types, and category of data types. In this tutorial, we'll begin learning from declaration of variables and I am targeting to complete these five topics in this tutorial, which consists of declaration of variable, assigning values to variable, assignment operator, scope of variable, standard default values, constant and symbolic constant. So let's begin with declaration of variables. Okay, so in previous tutorial, we have studied two categories of variable, primitive variables and object types. Primitive variables can be of category byte, short, char, int, long, float and double. And object types can be of very different categories. Out of them, we listed some of the categories which were byte with capital B, short with capital S, character, integer, long with capital L, float with capital F, double with uppercase D, then string, and then any user-defined object. And it can also contain many of the others predefined Java class object. So over here, in order to declare a primitive or an object type, you need to either mention the data type or the class name and then followed by the variable name or the object name. So in order to declare a primitive type, just mention the data type and variable name. For example, over here it's showing byte my byte. So byte is a data type and my byte is the, the variable of byte. Okay. So similarly we are having variables for short, char, int, long, float, and double. So these are primitive data types. Now let's move to object types. In object types, we are having capital byte, that is byte with the uppercase of B. Similarly, short character, integer, long float, and so on. So in order to declare an object type, you need to mention class name and then the object name. So object name could be any variable name. So over here, the object that I have created, or rather I would say the reference that I have created is my byte. Why I'm not saying it object is because I haven't assigned it. So if you haven't assigned it, then it will still remain as a reference. A reference become object when it is assigned. So I have created a reference of byte type over here. Byte is a class name and my byte is a variable name. So it is a reference of my of byte class. I hope it's very clear how we can declare a variable. Let's move forward to see how we can assign a variable. So, firstly, I have declared a variable in this example with data type byte and the name of the variable is my byte. And then I'm assigning a value to it. My byte equals 127. So I have assigned a value 127 to my variable my byte, which is of a data type byte. Over here, you can see equals to is a assignment operator that I am using to assign the value. So this thing over here is done in two lines, but I can do this thing in a single line over here. So in this example, I'm doing similar thing in a single line by using byte my byte equals to 127 so i'm doing initialization of my byte variable over here i'm declaring it as well as assigning it in a same place in a symbol 
line. Similarly, I can do that with a float variable. So float my float equals to the value that I have given is 199.99. Similarly, I can also create string literal. So string my string equals to string value. So over here, I have created an object of my string that is of a type or a class string and it is having a value string literal. Note that whenever we create an object, we use a new operator. That one we have studied in our tutorials of operator. Over here, I am not using new keyword. So over here, I am not creating a string object. Rather, I am creating a string literal. So there is a difference between doing string my string equals to the value of string and string my string equals to new string and then assigning it a value. Well, if you are not able to get it right now, it's okay. We will study that detail in some other tutorial. For now, just consider we can assign a value to string like that. String my string equals to the value in double quotes. Okay, so the below example will show you how we can create a string object. So string is the class name. Then there is an object string which is the name of the object equals to new string. And then I am passing the value, whatever I want to pass to initialize my string object. So note that the difference between the two is, first one is creating a string literal. And in this, it is creating a string object and a literal. So the literal over here is my object string. And the object that is created is object string. In this case, only a literal is created, which is string value and it is denoted by the name my string. Okay, so there is a difference between string literal and string object. We will study the details of these in later tutorial. Okay, moving forward. Over here we are creating the object of character class. So character ch equals to new character and we are passing a character in a single code. So it is of an object type. Okay, so here we are assigning a value so, well, I'm saying ch is a variable in a way that although it's an object, but you know, it follows all the same syntax rules that a variable follows. And just to show you the difference between an object type variable and a primitive type variable. So, we have placed it right here instead of, uh, you know, making you understand that separately. Again, integer my int equals to new integer 123 so the value i have passed is 123 and the object that is created is called my int i hope that's clear moving forward to assignment operator assigning a value to a variable seems straightforward enough you can simply assign the stuff on right hand side of the equals to to the variable on the left hand side. So you have seen in our previous example we are using the assignment operator to assign a value. So whatever is there on this side, I will be taking it as a right hand side, will be assigned to the left hand side which is this x. Okay, so the value of right hand side is assigned to the left hand side. So we are sure but do not expect to be tested on something like this. If you are planning to give any of the exam, then definitely nobody will ask you what is assignment operator. It is a very simple concept. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, so these are some of the examples of assignment operator where we are um, creating an object of a class button using assignment operator and a new operator. So, uh, here is a class name button, B is a reference name and then we are using assignment operator, we are using a new keyword and then a button class with a parenthesis. So this statement will actually create a new object of class button which is called B. Okay, now let's move to next example where we are saying button B is equals to null. Well, 
over here we have created a reference of button with the name b but the button variable b is not referring to any of the object so it is still a reference variable and we have assigned it to null so it's not a object yet okay let's see one more assignment this is a literal assignment where we are creating a variable x of a type int and assigning it to the value 7. So it's a simple literal assignment. In the next example, the assignment is done with an operation. So we have created a variable y which is of type int and we are assigning it using an operation x plus 2. So the value of x that is 7 plus 2 then value of y will be 9 and how it is assigned using an expression so it is very acceptable to Java to do that using an assignment operator similarly uh, example below it is also showing an expression uh, with a multiplication operator so we are using an assignment operator and to assign the value we are calculating the value first using a multiplication operator fine so Let's move forward and let's study the scope of variable. So what do you mean by scope of variables? Well, have you ever seen that a variable with the same name is used in two different places in a same piece of Java code, but they are having a different value? I mean, maybe we have declared it just in the starting of a class and then we are also declaring the variable with the same name somewhere below. Well, sometimes the compiler will yell at this situation and sometimes it will accept it. Why? Because it purely depends that in which position you are declaring that variable in your code. Well, that is called scope of variable. So each variable has some defined scope. Scope means uh, you can say up to which block the variable will still contain some memory. So the variable will still have some reference. That means the variable will be still accessible. So we will study the scope of variables. Okay. Well, we kind of have four kind of scope of variables. One is static, then instance scope, local scope and block scope. Depending upon that, we have divided variables into four categories. One is static variable. So static variable have longest mm -hmm. scope. They are created when a class is loaded. They survive as long as class stays loaded in JVM. Okay. So as soon as your class is loaded in JVM, your static variable get memory. So at that time, the static variable get initialized. So it is having a longest scope and it will survive as long as your class loaded remains in JVM. Okay. Next is instance variable. They are next among long lived. They are created when a new instance is created. They live until instance is removed. So whenever you create an object of a class or an instance of a class, at that time, the instant variable take memory in your machine and they will live as long as that instance is living because the instance variable are actually related to a particular instance. So each instance variable will be actually linked to one of the instance of a class. Fine. Then we have local variable. Local variables are next. They live as long as their method remains on stack. Okay, so basically local variables are on stack. Uh, what is stack? Uh, just to tell you a summary that um, everything in Java is either stored on a stack or on a heap. So stack and heap are you can say a kind of memory uh, that JVM allows you to store your data variables method a static variable each and every kind of variables and methods and stuff arrays onto them so local variables are stored in a stack memory okay and they uh, will live as long as your local block will live 
or as long as your method will remain on stack. So local variables are usually created in a method. Okay. As soon, uh, see, however, local variables can be alive and still be out of scope. So that means it could be possible that the local variable is still taking some memory in your machine. Such scenarios later on. Okay. So moving forward to block variables. Block variables live only as long as the code block is executing. So they are usually declared in a block and um, their scope is only in a block. Uh, for example, of block variable will be a variable of a for loop. So the variable that you declare in for loop, let's say int i, its scope will only remain for that for loop. Outside that for loop, uh, that int variable cannot be accessible. Okay. So uh, there are two rules of the scope of variable. Rule one is that a variable defined in a block are only accessible from within a block. The scope of a variable is the block in which it is defined. Okay. For example, uh, well, we do an example directly on our Eclipse. That's why I haven't pasted it over here. Okay, moving forward to rule number two, which is saying that nested block can access variables declared in an outer block. So let's do an example and uh, let's see like how this can be executed. Well, here I am. Um, so actually I'm creating uh, my example in an ID called Eclipse. So I'll be teaching you how to download this ID and how to run your program in ID in next tutorial. For now, if you want to run your example, you can type exactly the same example which I'm typing on this ID into your notepad and run it using command prompt. Okay, so I'm just creating a class over here. The name of the class I have given is test and I have created a main method in the class test. Now let's see uh, the scope of variables. So the first scope that we talked about was a static variable. So let's create a static variable. So I'm going to create another class which is saying is class scope of where okay so i have just given a logical name to class and over here i am creating a static int a fine so i have actually created a static variable with the name a and it's a static variable fine so and then let me create an instance variable so instance variable will look Exactly same as a static variable, but it will not have a static keyword. So int p is a instance variable. Okay, now let me create a local variable. So I'll create a local variable in my main method. Let me create a variable int a. And I'm giving it a value 10. Okay. Let me also give value to this int a, which is 13. And let me give value to this variable as 8. Okay. Now, let me create a block variable. This is a block variable. So, our rule says that static variable has longest scope. So, you know, as I told you, static variable um, will take a memory as soon as this class is loaded by JVM and, you know, it will remain as it is. So, let's see how it is done. Let me create a object of this over here.
okay and now i'm going to access my static variable over here to access a static variable you can simply do that by your class name dot a so a is my static variable okay so what i'm doing is i'm incrementing my static variable fine now let me create another instance of a static variable scope of var 2 and again i'm incrementing the value of a now let's see the value of a over here i'm just going to print that value so i'm going to run my program right now okay so it printed out 15 so you see the value that I created of a static variable in A was 13. So the static variable is independent of the instance. So I use the class name to increment it. For the first time it got incremented to 14 and then I incremented it again which made it 15. And when I'm printing the value the output I'm getting is 15. Fine. Now let's see how we can implement the rule uh, in this first rule say the block variable cannot be used outside the block okay so let's see i'm just uh, commenting this out because this part is done and we're concentrating on a block variable so over here um, i is a block variable and inside that i'm printing the value of i fine Let's see if I'm able to do that outside this block, outside this for block. I'm just putting it here. You see I'm getting an error over here. I'm not able to print the value of i outside the for block. And what is the error I'm getting? It says i cannot be resolved to a variable because the scope of i is within a for block. And outside the for block, our compiler doesn't know what is i. That's why it is giving us an error. I hope that's clear. Okay guys, now let's see whether we can also test the rule second. Nested block can access the variable declared in a outer scope. So let's see if we can do that. Okay. Okay, so according to the second rule, I have created a local variable a equals to 10. So it says it can be used in any of a nested scope. So what is the nested scope over here? I think it's this block, for block. So will I be able to use the variable a in this for block? Let's see. Well, see the compiler is not giving any error and I'm able to use it. Let me run the code. Well, I got the output that is 10. It's printed 10 times because I have used a loop. So we can see that we have fulfilled both according to the scope of variables. Okay, well guys, I think uh, two of the topics are still remaining for this tutorial that I thought I'll be covering up. One is constant and symbolic constant and other is default value of variables. But I think uh, I don't want to stretch this tutorial for very long. So I'm going to, you know, cover those two topics in next video. Uh, for now, just... Um, you can just go through this link. I have provided a link if you want to read more about scope of variables. So thank you guys. Let's meet in next tutorial.